This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2940, The Beauty of Adopting a Beginner's Mind, by Salon George of spirituallivingforbusypeople.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your host and narrator, back today with an article from Salon George. So let's get right to it as we optimize your life. The Beauty of Adopting a Beginner's Mind, by Salon George of Spiritual Living for Busy People, Dot com. I've always wanted to play the cello. For the longest time, it remained a wish. Well, that changed a few weeks ago when I finally decided to follow through. I went online and bought one on the cheap and then signed up for lessons online. I think the reason why I hesitated all these years was that I was afraid of the idea of being a beginner. And even though I was already a musician, learning a new instrument as an adult felt almost as daunting as learning a new language. In our culture, we tend to dismiss the experiences of beginners, maybe except for babies. We don't wanna be seen or identified as beginners. On the other hand, we implicitly trust experts and spend much of our lives seeking to be seen as experts ourselves. But in Zen Buddhism, there's something known as beginner's mind or don't know mind. This is the perspective of bringing a sense of openness and curiosity to everything we do and everyone we meet, even in situations where we think we are knowledgeable. I've known of this concept for a number of years now, but it gained a more practical significance as I ventured into the world of stringed instruments. Looking stupid. When my cello arrived, I unpacked it and installed the bridge, the unvarnished wooden section which supports the strings and transfers their vibrations to the body of the instrument. Once the bridge was in place, I excitedly pulled out the bow and began moving it across the strings. Nothing. I tried again. No sound. A quick YouTube search provided the answer. I needed to apply rosin, a form of resin that covers the hairs of the bow with powdery, slightly sticky substances that allow the bow hairs to grab the strings and cause them to vibrate. Boy, did I feel stupid. How did I not know this basic fact? Well, even after applying the rosin, it took a couple tries to finally get a sound. Well, I was finally in business, but not yet. It turns out that producing sounds acceptable to the human ear on any stringed instrument requires good bowing technique, which takes many years to master. To produce a pleasing sound, you need to control the weight of the bow on the strings, the speed of the bow, and the position of the bow all need to be combined perfectly and constantly monitored. And don't get me started with the left hand. It needs to become familiar with a fretless fingerboard so that the right pitches can be produced on demand. It requires amazing muscle memory and impeccable ear to make sure you stay in tune. It's the reason why most beginning string players are intolerable to listen to. So in short, I was not quite yet in business. I have so much to learn. The benefit. It's not easy to become a beginner again, but in my short time of being a beginner, I've begun to notice and experience this primary benefit. You begin to slow down and pay attention. One of the hallmarks of becoming an expert is speed. A virtuoso violinist can dazzle the eye and boggle the mind by playing impossibly fast while making it look easy. A math whiz can perform complex mental calculations in seconds. An expert historian can recall every detail of complicated historical events in real time without the help of a textbook or the internet. Speed impresses us, but we can also miss out on a lot when we just focus on speed. Becoming a beginner again forced me to slow down so I could pay attention to the position of my body, my hands, and on the sound I was producing on the cello. It forced me to pay more attention when playing the piano, an instrument I thought I was already familiar with. Allowed me to be more patient when teaching my own children the piano, since I'm now better able to identify with their experience as beginners. Turns out that slowing down and paying attention does wonders for human connection too. Stay curious. The easiest way to adopt a beginner's mind? Stay curious. Learn a musical instrument. Learn a new language. Listen to your loved one as if you were meeting them for the first time. Leave your assumptions at the door. Talk less, be humble, and open your heart. 
It's true, you won't dazzle the masses as a beginner, but you'll be constantly dazzled by the world around you. You become like a little child who sees beauty and wonder in everything and everyone. You just listened to the post titled, The Beauty of Adopting a Beginner's Mind by Silon George of spiritualivingforbusypeople.com. Thank you to Silon. Funny and really interesting point he made there in the beginning talking about how we tend to dismiss the experiences of beginners, except for babies. And how true is that? We tend to celebrate a baby's first words, a baby's first steps, even a child's first day of school, often with pictures or video or both. But then as life goes on, we forget to stop and celebrate important moments, like the first time we play a note on an instrument or the first sentence we speak in a new language. I think those are just as big of a deal, so it's interesting that we kind of play those down. But anyway, speaking of playing, the timing of this article was perfect for me because I recently started playing the drums again. And just like Silon started an online course, I'm going through these same sort of feelings as him, starting from the beginning, even though I do have a decent amount of experience with the drums. And having that beginner's mind does help. Even how I was holding the drumsticks or how my feet were placed on the pedals back when I first started probably wasn't the best. So coming back to this beginner's mind helps. I too realize there's so much left to learn. And if you enjoy this topic, there's a book called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind that you might wanna check out. It's a short read, something I had to read in school a while back. You might enjoy that one. But that should do it for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.